Zero accounting software 2023 credit card bank feed add data from the bank feed so that it is used to help create our financial statements. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our first a word from our sponsor. Well, actually these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. We're going to duplicate some tabs so we can put those reports in them as done every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again so we can duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down opening up that balance sheet report. As it's thinking tab into the right going to the accounting drop down opening up that income statement or profit and loss report. Putting a date range on the income statement, hit the drop down. We want to go from January, but 2022, because that's the date of our bank feed information on the 1st of January, going to 2022, December 31st, and then we'll update the report. Back to the first tab where we have been uploading our bank feed information, accounting drop down, the bank feed information, including not just the checking accounts, but also the credit card accounts are up top and the bank accounts because we've uploaded them connecting to the bank or uploading the transactions in a prior presentation. This is our credit card. Now, prior to this, I have been hitting the drop down and going to the account transactions. And I've noticed here, it's a little bit easier to just hit the uh, credit card item up top and that takes us into basically the same area where we have the account transactions the bank statement stuff the cash coding which if you don't have that you could turn it on and the reconcile nothing's on the account transaction side of things because we're not usually entering anything on our side first but typically depending on the credit card statements this information pulling in from the financial statements to make the transaction. So we're not doing a full service accounting system here, really. We're making our books from the bank feeds because the electronic transfers, we're assuming they're pretty dependable and they transfer fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna do, we're gonna do this fairly quickly because we've seen, uh, we've seen these kind of transactions on the banking side. The only difference here is that most of these will be uh, payments for like goods and services. So we'll have expense forms typically. And uh, and that's gonna be, and that we're, we're gonna have a liability going up instead of the credit card going down. And then when we pay off the credit card, we'll have these payments. 
Now, I'm not going to enter these the the payments of, of of making the payment or paying off the credit card yet. We'll do that in a future presentation. That one's going to be a, a bit more complicated, not really complicated, but for example, if I go to the balance sheet over here, you can see that if I had a checking account transaction and I had my credit card, which would be down here in the liabilities once we start adding stuff to it, when I pay off the credit card from the checking account, now I have transactions that involve only two accounts, both of which are connected to the bank feeds. So now the question is, well, how do I deal with that, right? Because they're gonna be showing up on both sides. So we can basically enter the transaction from one side and basically match it to the other side. So we'll talk about you know that in a future presentation. Right now, we're just gonna record the charges that happen. Uh, so let's start with that. So we'll go down here, like here's Costco. Now Costco is one of those items where like if you were to buy business stuff at Costco, then you might normally buy supplies, but you might sometimes be buying stuff that is for uh, for uh, equipment or something like that, or you might have personal stuff that you're buying from there. So, so you want to set up your rules in such a way that you can automate whatever's happening going forward. I'm just going to assume all the stuff from Costco is going to be supplies. So I'm going to say add the details here. And I can say, who's it going to? Now, I don't want to say the whole thing here. I'm just going to say it's going to Costco. I don't really need the dot com. Just maybe if it just has Costco, that's going to be my contact and date is good. And we could, just like we saw with the bank feeds, possibly have items. But normally, we're not going to have items because those are going to be like the inventory items. Usually, we're going to be using this to pay for like expenses, like supplies, which I'll put on the description. And then the account, I'm going to put supplies. Do I have a supplies account? We don't have one. Uh, let's make a supplies account. So I'll hit the drop down. Uh, we've just got the tele. Let's make it 6030. Uh, let's say adding an account, making it this thing as we go. I'm going to type in the number 6030. The account type is going to be an expense account, as is typically the case when we have credit card transactions, although we might be purchasing equipment uh, for it. I'm going to call it supplies, which would be an asset account. Supplies. I can't spell and talk at the same time. Uh, well, then stop talking because we've heard enough of your rambling. I have to talk. That's my job. Talking is my job. So let's go. Uh, let's go up top and make a rule for it now. I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to hit the drop down and then create a bank rule. The bank rule. And so I'm just going to say if it contains this item. So the same bank rule setup we saw with the checking account. I'm going to say if it if it has any text field, I love that any text field thing. And if it contains, not equals, but just contains, and all I really need is Costco. If you see Costco in it, that's all you need to see. That's all you need to see, man. But note that if we buy other stuff from Costco, then, for example, uh, we might have a dollar rule. We might add a rule and say if if the dollar amount is over, we'll talk more about those kind of rules later, but if it's over a certain amount, then uh, then don't apply the rule or, so, or something like that, right? We could try to restrict the rule to help us see what we purchased, or we might have different locations of Costco. Maybe Maybe we have Costco from different areas and some of that other bank text would give us an indication that this is going to one location versus another allowing us to maybe break out our information by location with more complex rules. We'll talk about more complex rules in future presentations. So we'll just keep it here for now. And I'm going to say this is Costco. Costco is our vendor. Is, did I spell it wrong? I'll just copy it down here. Uh, we'll just copy it so you don't... I don't want to look stupid for spelling it wrong. Costco. Okay, and then uh then we're gonna say the account is gonna be supplies supplies 100 percent go into supplies and well i've been putting this to the reference up top and then we could apply it to now uh the credit card or i can apply the rule to all accounts so i might say hey if it goes to the checking account or the credit card if it says costco 
then do the Costco thing. I don't want to name the rule that whole thing. I'm just going to name the rule the Costco rule. It's just the Costco rule. You don't have to all the, all this other garbage in there. And we will save it and see that it should apply out the Costco rule. So boom, it applies it out. And now going forward, it should be as easy as just adding, clicking them off and saying, yeah, that looks right. Yeah, uh, that looks right. The rule has been applied. If I want to look at the details and say, you know, what K Paso down here, there we go. And so we're like, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's uh, it. So I'll save it. Let's go ahead and do that one and say, okay, doke. Uh, it's perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. Mundo's my friend. He's a perfectionist. So I like to say perfecto Mundo, you know, because it's, we did it perfecto, just like Mundo, the perfectionist. Uh, would do it. Let's go to the balance sheet and update it. And now we can see that if I go down to the liability account, we've got the credit cards. And now instead of the cash account going down, just like we had at the beginning where we had a liability going up because we overdrawed the checking account. If you've been following along with our checking account stuff, we overdrawed it. And so we had a liability. That's what's happening here. We, it's kind of like the bank account, except we're overdrawing it. That's what a credit card basically is, right? They're, they're, we're overdrawing our bank account, kind of, you can think of it as. And we're gonna have to pay it off in the future. And they're gonna hit us with penalties when we do that. And so they're really suckering us in, putting us in the hole, and then they're gonna crank up the, the fees and the interest, like when we're down, when, they're, when you're down, that's when they kick you. Okay, but no, we, We'll pay it off monthly. And uh, so there's that. Anyways, I'm going to go back to the other side. We're going to update it here. And then we can see down here we have our supplies pulling in. Boom. Supplies. And that should be automatic going forward. Automatic. So, and, and we have using the spend money form. So if I go into it, it doesn't take me to the bank feeds. If I drill back down on it, it takes me to a, a spend money form. So same kind of form, except we're spending money, not from a checking account, but from a credit card type of account, right? So if I go back over here, by the, by the way, if you hit the drop down and you say you're gonna go into a spend money form, then now you have this other option of a credit card. So the spending money from the credit card is spending money that you don't have versus the checking account, which is spending money, which theoretically you do have. Although we did that before, even though we didn't have any money in the checking account, but that's just because we didn't put our beginning balance in and we'll talk about beginning balances later. So let's just keep on adding. So here's a CSV. Let's say this was for, for gas or something. So I'm gonna say uh, edit here and I can say uh, it was that and if, uh, and then maybe this was for gas. All right, let's put it for auto and then gas. So here's where we have our option of, uh, uh, let's, uh, hold on, I don't have that. Let's think about it for a second. Uh, 6040, let's add an account, 6040. It's gonna be an expense type of account, an expense type of account, and then I'm gonna call it auto and then gas. Now note, gas has one S, I think. <laughs> note that if you uh, have multiple things related to the automobile, then you, you could group the accounts together. So you might, you might put multiple accounts in there, breaking out your autos, and then with this great tool of zero, with the edit layout, group them together. So for internal reporting, you can break out the detail possibly for taxes or something, but for external reporting, you can collapse them into one auto. Also note that for taxes in the United States, you're going to also have to deal with the fact that you might be on a mileage method versus a direct method and the automobile kind of, kind of, kind of messes things up uh, in that area as well. But I won't, I don't, won't go into that. So a whole another tangent that is for another time and another place because we don't we just don't have time for that man i don't have time for that right now okay so so we added it and let's go ahead and say okay 
and then if I go back on over, the credit card is going up. We just owe more money again. This is getting ridiculous. I'm getting nervous, but I, at least I can drive my car now uh, because I put gas in it. A little bit of gas. That's not going to take me to. Are you sure that was gas? That's not going to fill up the tank. You you just barely put in it. You just put enough gas in it to get to the neck to get to the. Oh, all right. So board of accountancy. Let's say this one is like dues of some kind. Uh, so let's say that I'm just going to add the account and then do a rule. So I'm going to say it's going to be six zero five zero. And let's say that this is uh, 6050. It's going to be an expense type of account. And we're going to call it dues and subscriptions. All right. Why don't you have some courtesy for the person that's going to drive the car after you? You just put enough. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. I don't want to get into it. I'm gonna say, save it. Uh, there's an error, tax, tax. It's not tax exempt. All right, let's try it again. I'm still just pissed about the whole gas situation. It's hard to concentrate. So annoying, it's inconsideracies. I'm gonna add that. Let's go ahead and reconcile it. And then if I go to the first tab and update, uh the credit card has gone up again and on the income statement we're gonna have the 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 dues now in play all right anything else that we can add here now these are all going to be payments so these uh the, like the four seven seven twenty nine you would think would also be on the other side on the checking account let's check it out this is on eight seven four seven seven eight seven four seven seven let's go to the bank accounts and let's go into my checking account i could just do it by clicking this thing here it's way faster it's a whole that saves like two clicks right there two clicks off my life that i get to save and do other stuff with so there's four seven seven twenty nine see it's a bank fee to bank fee transaction so now uh i need to kind of match those those two out so i can record it on one side and then match it to the other so we'll talk more about that in uh future presentations it'll be great and so we can see that we've been constructing our books as we go got a more detailed income statement let's take a look at the trustee trial balance we can look at that beautiful creation that we have been making this is better than i'm we're like artists over here this is better than modern art you know there's a modern art where they like where they like stapled a banana to the wall or something and called it art this is like way way more creative than more creative than what's going on in the writers guild like in hollywood and stuff the stuff they're cranking out it's got it's got no it's got no soul man but this is like look at this look at what we put together so in any case you got the balance sheet on top of the the, the, the balance sheet stops at equity and then we've got our sales and we've got our new expense accounts that we created down here. Debits equaling the credits, which is the double entry accounting system functioning. If I go to the balance sheet, same thing as the balance sheet being in balance and that the assets equal the liabilities and the equity. How does the income statement fit into the picture? It's squished into the equity section. One number, 766112. If I go to the income statement and make sure that income statement is up to date, that number is the bottom line of our performance statement, our income statement, 766112 on the trial balance. However, we don't have the income statement in the equity section on that one line item. It has not yet rolled into the retained earnings, but rather is broken out on the line by line breakout, which is why the trial balance is actually more efficient of a report to be looking at. And the double entry accounting system expressed in debits and credits is also more efficient oftentimes if you can get a feel for how that works.